Hello, it's the ghost. Welcome to A Stranger World Than Fiction, where we are taking a look at what's all going on out there. The oddities, the strange that others are claiming to be true. It's the middle of summer, but those Halloween stories and things we like to call creepy tales, they're good all year long, aren't they? We talk about the strange and unusual here on Stranger World, and ghostly sightings and accounts definitely could fall into the category of strange and even unusual, although for some, it's neither. They have a connection, and it happens to them maybe only one time, maybe often. Let's take a listen to this share of an account from a long time ago. All right, people are talking about this in the UK. comes to us from Ghost Walk Brighton. Legion of the Damned. In the early 1950s, a young apprentice plumber by the name of Harry Martindale had been repairing a boiler in the basement of the treasurer's house, which stands close to York Minster. He was about to pack away his tools when he heard what sounded like a trumpet. He thought at first it was perhaps a brass band in the street outside, and so he paid it little attention. I don't know about you guys, but if someone had a brass band outside in the street, I'd probably pay attention. But not this guy at this time. Then came a second blast, only this time much louder and much closer. It appeared to be coming from the far end of the cellar. Harry peered into the dimly lit cavernous surroundings, yet saw nothing. He was about to continue packing away his things when he found himself seized with horror. A horse's head suddenly appeared from out of the wall at the far left end of the cellar. Its rider was then revealed followed by 15 Roman soldiers. Wow. The weary and dejected-looking soldiers paid no attention to Harry as they shuffled their way across the cellar floor, only to disappear into the opposite wall. Harry sat hidden behind the boiler, transfixed at what he had just witnessed. Eventually managing to gain his composure, He hastily gathered up his belongings and made a dash for the stairs. He emerged on the ground floor breathless and confused, making straight for the exit and the comforting reassurance of the fresh air and sunlight. Still breathless from his speedy exit, he stood confused and mystified from the experience. He felt it had all been too vivid to have been a mere figment of his imagination. At first, He considered sharing his account of the events with someone, but then thought they might deem him mad. He therefore resolved to keep quiet about the incident. Twenty years passed, and Harry still maintained a stubborn silence over what he had seen that day. He then read an article in a local newspaper about two other people who had shared similar experiences at the very same spot in the cellar. He finally decided it was time to reveal what he had seen. Harry spoke of the soldiers' appearance, each wearing shabby green kilted skirts that appeared roughly dyed. He had also noted that all the soldiers carried long spears and short swords. They also held round shields, which was uncommon for the Roman army. However, the most curious feature was that all the soldiers appeared to have been chopped off at the knee, the lower half of their legs disappearing into the stone floor. It was around this time that a group of archaeologists had been undertaking some excavation work in the cellar area. They eventually came upon an old Roman road some 18 inches below the modern floor level. Thus, anyone walking on the old road would have appeared to have been cut off at the knee, which is exactly how the soldiers had appeared to Harry. By this time, Harry had become a police officer and was seen as an honest, upstanding person who would not embellish in any way what he had seen that day in the cellar. He was subsequently interviewed by experts in Roman history. He claimed to know little about Roman history, other than what he had gleaned from Hollywood's epics, nor was he interested in ghosts or the paranormal. Nonetheless, he swore by his account over what he had seen. The experts 
deliberated on the details Harry had given them. Following a period of research, they discovered that auxiliary forces to the Roman army had been based in York, towards the end of the Roman occupation. Furthermore, they would have worn green kilted skirts and carried round shields, rather than the common rectangular ones, more commonly associated with Roman legions. Harry claimed never to have had a paranormal experience until that day in the cellar, nor had he experienced one since. So who were the bedraggled-looking ghostly soldiers? Perhaps they were a mercenary force attached to the Roman legion who had suffered a terrible defeat at the hands of Picts during the collapse of Roman Britain. We shall probably never know. All right. Well, I am someone who's been to different places in the world and who has seen many things. And when I hear accounts like this one, it gives me pause. I do believe that there is a gateway between those living and those that have gone beyond. Those are my beliefs. Maybe they're not yours. In reading this, I think of two things. Yes, this is entirely possible. But the other thing I think is that there's no way I can prove any of this. I can just take this experience and the account in and apply my own personal thoughts, opinions, and beliefs. There was a lot of death and confusion in those days, people fighting vicious wars and confrontations to try to get somewhere with their lives, the territories that they ruled and lived on. All of these different fights to get us to the world we live in today. And of course, we're all still fighting. In a way, this type of ghostly encounter and how it's presented here, I feel like we're on the edge of a true account versus an urban legend just waiting to explode. That's why I, in the beginning, spoke about Halloween and scary tales, because it's things exactly like this that grow into something else. Am I saying that none of it is based on fact? No, I'm not saying that at all, because fact is how a lot of legends and stories that are told over and over again came to be in the first place. We think they're fun little campfire stories that we tell each other for a really good fright. But in doing that, we might not really be respecting or looking at the fact that there could very well be an original story tied to that legend that we like to tell over and over again. Imagine someone like this telling his account with ghostly soldiers way back then. He waited 20 years to even share what he knew. Imagine that. But then he finally did. And when he did, someone that heard him could have been a friend, could have been small children listening through a window. But somehow, some way, his experience gets told over and over again. And when this happens, I don't think we ever can be sure if the story is embellished or inflated in some way. Are all the details exactly correct? Or over time, does it just become something that has morphed with other stories? Paired with the dramatic presentation of the storyteller, who knows what it could become and how long it could last. What I think about all of this is that it's maybe a pleasurable way to get some of the truth, okay? Always keeping an open mind that, sure, these facts have survived the trials of time and are exactly true to the original encounter shared by a man named Harry Martindale. Unless you have the time and technology to travel back and ask this man himself, one can only speculate. There are people out there that give these stories a lot of attention, almost in a dream state. People like this will read encounters such as this one, watching it all play out in their mind, and they'll believe every word. While others wouldn't even take a look, not even a small second, to entertain an idea and experience like this one. I suppose in the end I'm someone in the middle. I do believe in the idea of it all. I do believe these encounters can happen and have happened. But I do not know Harry Martindale, and I was not there when he shared his encounter for the first time. So, I will sit quietly and take it in, knowing and believing that this is very well possible. 
and maybe that's all I need to know. Believing in encounters, believing in those reaching out from the other side, some for help, some confused, some even trying to provide peace and comfort to those left behind. That's just a part of who I am, and I have my own reasons for that, as do you, as far as believing something like this or not, or believing in the idea of it at all. You can tell me. And thank you for listening today. And I will talk to you all soon.